evening. As per special request, we're going to cover polkas tonight. And quick disclaimer on why I don't like and why I like polkas. I like playing fast. And I got the muscle control to do it, and playing live gets me all up to play polkas, and I like playing polkas. That said, I hate the sound of Balron to a polka. I think it's terrible. I think it's the wrong type of drum. I think a snare drum would be better, and that's why I'm using this for today to get that snare drum. So if you remember way back, covering like the old Ronono Snooty snare drum effect, you know, the whole... That sort of idea, you're going to need it. Some people will tackle it with it. Some people don't like using it. But try to find something that fits the music. Polka's a dance, and in Irish music, typically, I believe they were introduced into Irish music back in the 1800s. So that kind of makes it a 19th century introduction. It's typically the same quadrilles you find played in most European polkas anyway that aren't in three, four time, like some of the ones you find in South America. I think in, um, I think it's Argentina, they accept quite a few three, four polka types. Um, in Irish music, it's two, four cut time. And you usually have an offbeat sort of thing. So instead of, so instead of, it's more like that sort of idea. The other thing is that typically Irish music polkas are played fast. They're like 120 beats per minute or faster. They're quick, they're lively, and they sound like this. So quickly, if you're a double-ended player, you're going to hate this. That's a lot of swinging. If you're someone playing single end, the baby grip, might be a bit easier because you can at least swing back and forth and skip it a little easier. Or you can just simply, you know, do a lock grip like this. back is simple. I'm trying to create a high spot and a low, sort of like a kick and a, and a hit. This simulates the snare. And here's the kick. And if I want to add that little bit of flair, the ba -da 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 sort of sound, which is kind of what a snare would do, it's like that. Out, back, in, in. So, like that. One, two, three, four. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, three, four, like that. Like that. Really frustrating. If you don't like to play fast, here's what I would suggest. Make your life a lot simple by either playing slower polkas, because they do exist, or sticking to double-ended playing. I actually find it's a lot easier in many respects. Maybe... Using this to make that snare sound makes a life a lot easier, and you're going to lift it and bring it back on to create the high hits. So you got the kick and the high. So you get a... And I'm not hitting too much. It's just... So one... Played slowly, it actually is a nice little warm up. But when you're playing, you know, a quick, a quicker speed sort of a sort of speed or faster. Here I've had a few people suggest ideas. And one of them is from a gentleman I play with, Bill Curvin, who plays it this way. which if I play this, is going to work. The nice thing 
about that is that you're skipping it. Like that. You can control it much easier from that one fulcrum position than you can from here. It's impossible to do rolls. Otherwise, you'd be playing it like a typical snare drum. You'd be going back and forth. You know, that, that sort of idea where you're playing, it's like back and forth. If you want to think of it that way, playing it like a little bit of a military sort of thing, this works just fine. Hit it. If you're playing single-ended, you're going to have the devil's time of doing that. I would highly suggest switching to something like the baby grip or a thumb lock grip. That way you can just kind of go. And that makes doing the jazz brush sort of idea is so much easier rather than doing it too much so physically here's what i think is easier if you're doing single or sorry single single or double-ended minimize body motion you're going to waste a lot of your energy doing this it's really frustrating try to minimize motion as much as possible by keeping it Try to that. and try to keep those accents down hits as down hits. Don't go because when you try to accent anything, guess what? You're accenting on the up. That's frustrating because ha now you have to roll your brain around and go. And I'm doubling up. You know, you have to roll it out or do something to speed it up to get you on the double down. Okay, there's that. Minimize movement and do the sound effect difference from the back of the drum. Same thing as this. Actually, I think this is one of the best ways of doing it. Because it keeps it simple and it's easy to control. You just can't get rolls. But if you want to include rolls... I would highly suggest not using the Bauron's typical sound. I would highly suggest thinking of it like a snare player. Because there ain't no traditional Bauron polka. It's just... Your job as a drummer is to make it work in the piece of music. variations. The variations in polkas do not come from the beat. 
the variations in polkas come from the melody. And the melody is filling in. Your job is just to backlight it. That's it. It's a pretty simple thing. The hard part, if you want to use those crazy... If you want to play fast, by all means, please do. And if you have the physical ability, please do. There are slower ones out there where you're like, don't, oh, sorry, pardon me, don't make this mistake. That's a real. You want. But you can slow it. There are slower ones out there at like half this pace. But typically in Irish music sessions, your polkas are going to be fast and furious. And you better be able to hang on. So I have the, the three things I would do is, number one, not play them. Pick up a different instrument and play it. Bauron does not fit into polkas. But if you can make whoops, this work for you, minimize your movement. And the major accent is on the offbeat. So one, two, three, four, one, or sorry, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And when you're doing up and down strikes like that, try not to do this. If you, if you find yourself doing this, just switch to a single hit. Save yourself a lot of pain. Don't overstress it. If you are a player out there who plays using a bent wrist, don't play it. I highly, highly am just going to come out and say this. If you're someone who plays, if you're someone who plays this way, don't play them. Don't damage your wrist. And please stop playing this way. You're just going to end up destroying your wrist down the road. You know, learn a different angle of it. Be, be kind to yourself. Like, you don't have to do this. This is extra energy that's just wasting time and potentially damaging the carpal tunnel. So don't do that. Okay? These things pass over your hand like this and go straight up your arm. If you do this, guess what you're doing? You're limiting your movement. You're increasing your stress and 20 to 30 to 100,000 hits later, you're going to blow something out. So straight wrist. And keep the playing simple. Don't think Balron. Think snare drum, or think like an open, like the open top drums from like the old Kaylee videos and whatnot. And remember, you gotta feel the and. Feel the and. And 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 and. You gotta feel the and. If you've never played polkas. Please, 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 please sit in on an Irish dance ses session and watch people do polkas. You'll learn more watching people doing the dance than you will me telling you how to do the offbeats because you're going to watch those people. There's more information being bled right to you and you're going to remember it better. Drop into like a community center when they, if they're doing it. You know, contact the you know, on the session.org and see who is doing local dance sessions and listen and watch you're going to help yourself a thousandfold by actually doing less work and doing better. So I highly recommend not playing polkas unless you get them or unless you're looking for a physical challenge or if you like to keep your playing simple. Okay, if you're a double-ended player, try to keep things minimal. Learn how to bounce it off. Bounce off your fingers. If you're a single-ended player, I would highly suggest learning a thumb lock. If you're a baby grip player, you are going to have to work your forearm so much more than it's probably worth. I would probably learn a different grip. Um, and use these things. Get yourself away from the sound, unless you want to create that thonky, kind of funky, thonky hit. Which is actually kind of cool. You can make it work. If you're playing polkas and Appalachian music, it sounds amazing to do the, the really loose, thonky, flat, maybe tune your skin down a bit and get a real dead sound. But if you're playing in, playing in the Irish music session, 
please, please, please learn how to get into and save yourself injury and save your energy on playing. That way you can focus better, play better, and you'll get a better grasp of the music. At least that's my opinion on the subject. So I hope this helps in playing that sort of thing. If not, pick up a guitar <laughs> or learn it on a fiddle or borrow someone else's instrument and say, hey, can I play your tin whistle to play along with this? And learn it. Believe me, you're going to be a lot happier person playing it. So don't think Balron, think snare drum. Okay? Have a good night.